Today is a big day for creative professionals in the Apple ecosystem because not only is the new iMac Pro launching today, that super powerful all-in-one machine, but launching alongside it is the latest version of Final Cut Pro, and it's a doozy. It's a huge update. Final Cut Pro 10.4 launches today, and we have all the details in this hands-on video walkthrough. Check it out. Last week in New York, Apple provided us with a walkthrough of some of the new features found in Final Cut Pro 10.4. And we've been using the update for the last several days. Now, as you'll learn, Final Cut Pro 10.4 is packed with new enhancements and features, but there are three standout features that I like to talk about first. Number one is 360 degree VR support. Number two is advanced color grading tools. And then number three is support for HDR workflows, high dynamic range. Now, of course, that's not all. There are tons of other noteworthy features in Final Cut Pro 10.4, and we'll discuss those near the end of the video. So stick around and check it out. Let's start off with 360 degree VR. In Final Cut Pro 10.4, it's now possible to import, edit, and deliver 360 degree video in both monoscopic and stereoscopic formats. So this means that if you own a camera capable of shooting 360 degree video like the Samsung Gear 360 or the Views 360 VR, you can place that stitched footage into Final Cut Pro 10 and edit it. But what's really cool is that you can connect an HTC Vive and view your 360 degree footage right from within a VR headset. You can even monitor what a person sees within the headset right from within Final Cut Pro 10. And of course, there are special editing tools associated with VR content, along with dedicated 360 degree video effects like blur, glow, and sharpness. There are also additional titles and generators specifically built for this type of video, along with the new version of Apple Motion that's primed for 360 degree motion graphics content. It's really awesome. Having the ability to be able to edit and deliver 360 videos within Final Cut Pro 10 is a big deal because users are actively looking for ways to differentiate and diversify their content strategies. And this is definitely one way to do so. Now let's talk about probably one of the most exciting things about Final Cut Pro 10, advanced color grading. In prior versions of Final Cut Pro, those who wished to modify color had access to things like the color board along with a few other basic tools. But with Final Cut Pro 10.4, Apple has significantly upped its color game with a brand new suite of tools that's sure to make any editor happy. So there are color wheels, color curves, hue saturation curves, there's white balance, there's even an enhanced flexible interface that wraps it all together. So let's start off with color wheels. The new color wheel interface combines traditional hues, saturation, and brightness controls into a single easy to use interface. Previously, users had to rely on third-party plugins or software to have this type of all-in-one color control, but now it's built right in. The next way to modify or adjust color in Final Cut Pro 10 is by utilizing color curves. Now, besides providing you with fine grain control over color and luminance, Color curves also let you take advantage of control points to target specific ranges of color or luminance levels. Next up is hue saturation curves. Now this handy tool lets users doing post-production work sample a color within the viewer and instantly change the hue, saturation, or luminance of that specific color within the final image. Now obviously this is extremely cool and I can see this being utilized a lot with creative intent. Now here's something that I know a lot of you will be happy to hear. In Final Cut Pro 10.4, there is now a built-in white balance feature that makes it easier than ever to adjust white balance in post. Simply select the eyedropper tool after applying balance color, sample the pixels in the viewer that you know should be white, and just like that, you're provided with a precise manual white balance. That is really awesome. Final Cut Pro 10.4 is designed in a way to ease some of the friction associated with color grading. For example, there's now a dedicated button in the inspector to show and hide color tools. You can also choose which color tool appears by default in the app's preferences. And of course, you can use keyboard shortcuts to quickly apply wheels, curves, and toggle color effects. Finally, there are different ways to display color controls, which can be helpful if you don't have that much screen real estate to work with. For example, when working with color wheels, users can choose between a traditional diamond layout that displays all wheels at once or opt to show a single wheel at a time. 
The final big tent pole feature in Final Cut Pro 10.4 is support for HDR workflows or high dynamic range. This affords users the ability to import, edit, grade, and deliver HDR content that's destined for movie theaters, for instance, or for iTunes, or even streaming destinations that support HDR. There's three HDR-centric areas to focus on within Final Cut Pro 10.4, and those are HDR formats, scopes, and monitoring. Final Cut Pro 10.4 supports two standard HDR video formats, Rec 2020 HLG and Rec 2020 PQ for HDR10 output. And to help monitor brightness levels associated with the formats, you'll find a new HDR-centric waveform monitor that's capable of indicating brightness levels up to a whopping 10,000 nits. That's 20 times the brightness of the display on Apple's iMac Pro. And of course, it's possible to monitor HDR video directly from Final Cut Pro 10.4 using a third-party display. And in instances where you don't have access to an HDR-enabled display for real-time monitoring, Final Cut Pro 10.4 includes the option to view HDR as raw values. Now those are the three big tentpole features, but there are many other key features in Final Cut Pro 10.4, including iMovie for iOS import. It's finally possible to produce a rough cut of a project in iMovie on iOS and import that project directly to Final Cut Pro 10. Previously, such a workflow was only available between the mobile and desktop versions of iMovie. Now this is a great way to quickly conceptualize right there on location directly from your iPad or your iPhone, and then later send that footage over to Final Cut Pro for more advanced editing. Final Cut Pro 10.4 also brings custom LUT support to the table, allowing users to add custom LUTs to clips in the timeline. And since this is a standard effect in Final Cut Pro 10, it's easy to drag and drop a custom LUT onto the timeline and swap its order in the effects stack. And if you import log footage, Final Cut Pro 10 is smart enough to apply the proper Rec. 709 values to that footage in the browser. And yes, Final Cut Pro 10.4 adds HEVC support. If you use an iPhone 7 or later and are running iOS 11, you have the option of shooting 4K video using the new HEVC or H.265 codec. This codec is more efficient than H.264, but prior versions of Final Cut Pro 10 did not support it. And there are also other cameras like the Panasonic GH5 that can shoot high resolution 5K video using HEVC. With this latest update, it's now possible to edit videos shot in HEVC directly in Final Cut Pro 10 without any sort of conversion being involved. Now Canon C200 owners will love the fact that you can now natively edit Canon Cinema Raw Lite video directly in Final Cut Pro 10. It's even smart enough to automatically apply the correct gamma LUT to convert log footage to Rec. 709. That way it looks great right there in the browser. Logic Pro plugins have long been a feature in Final Cut Pro 10, but they've yet to receive a significant update until now. Each Logic Pro plugin has been updated for retina displays, that's really nice, and also features resizable layouts. It's a small detail, but one that is nonetheless appreciated. Now Final Cut Pro 10 brings in XML 1.7 support. And XML of course allows you to interact with other apps. Uh, for instance, when you're doing color grading and you wanna send out uh, whatever you're working on to another color grading app, you can do so with XML. And XML 1.7 now gives you those advanced hooks for some of the new features in Final Cut Pro 10.4, such as HDR, uh, the advanced color controls, and of course, 360 degree video. And in Final Cut Pro 10.4, optical flow is now built on metal, making it faster to create high quality retiming effects. What that means is that Final Cut Pro 10 has the ability to produce super smooth slow motion footage even if you shot at a relatively low frame rate. And finally, Final Cut Pro 10 now officially supports storing libraries and source media on shared storage devices that utilize the NFS protocol. NFS support lets multiple users access media assets when working on the same material. It goes without saying that this is a massive new update for Final Cut Pro 10, the biggest update since the app relaunched back in 2011, six and a half years ago. Now, just personally speaking, in my eyes, I think the new color grading features are by far the most exciting new thing about Final Cut Pro 10.4. It means you no longer have to necessarily rely on some of the third-party plugins that you used to, although some of those tools are still valid and still very helpful, 
even with 10.4. But I wanna know what you guys and gals appreciate the most about Final Cut Pro 10.4. Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you appreciated this video, leave me a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe if you haven't done so. We'll have many more Final Cut Pro 10 videos in the future. And when you think about it, it's only right that Final Cut Pro 10.4, a huge update, launches at the same time as the new iMac Pro. So don't forget that new iMac Pro launches today as well. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.